Guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. I am Eddie Oz and this is All Things Eddie's. If you guys haven't already, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. You can also follow me on Instagram, at Wealth and Fitness, and on Facebook if you search Eddie's Oz Turk. I do post a lot of daily content on the gram. You know, I'm constantly updating everything in regards to my life, the business and cars. Feel free to follow. We also have Q and A's on there. Sometimes we pick out questions and answer them in these vlogs, but I don't want to keep you guys waiting any longer. We are here today for one reason and one reason only to check out my drag build Toyota Supra which we're aiming to build to over 9,000 horsepower insert DBZ reference it's over 9,000 what the no we're not look we're aiming for a thousand kilowatts but the first goal is a thousand horsepower it's not a Toyota Supra if it isn't a thousand horsepower is that a Toyota Supra a Supra is this a Supra is that a Supra dude is that a Supra yeah, look this is the workshop where all Supras come. Before I take you guys in to the workshop to show you the elusive, do you even, deep jewel green Toyota Supra, I'm gonna give you guys a quick, 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 quick rundown as to why I'm so obsessed with these cars and what they mean to me. I also own two of these cars before I bought that one. So I'm gonna give you guys that little quick rundown right now. So in 2008, no, I'm joking. In 2008, I bought my four, my four. I bought my first Toyota Supra. It was a 1993 non-turbo model, non-turbo. So there's really not much for me to say. I was a young, impressionable kid when the Fast and the Furious franchise came out. That really catalyzed my want and need for these cars. I remember running home from primary school, opening up LimeWire. Did you have LimeWire? I, I remember just searching any piece of footage that I could find on dial-up internet and waiting days at a time to be able to get footage to watch these cars and just hear the noise. I was obsessed with the turbo whistles. I was obsessed with the shape, the wide arches, the quad bulb taillights, the fighter jet cockpit cabin. Like everything about the car drew me towards it. And so when I first owned one, I was obsessed, even though it was a non-turbo model. So my first car was a red Toyota Supra 1993 model. I worked extremely hard to be able to get one. And later I ended up selling it because like every car head, uh, you chase more power. And so I wanted to buy the RZ version, which is basically the balls to the wall, 2JZ GTE, twin turbo, six speed get rag, indestructible JDM car from Japan. Insert Godzilla, although people might, the skyline's Godzilla. So don't insert Godzilla. Is there another animal that is just as wild as Godzilla that we can attribute to the Supra? We're doing it here today. No one's ever done it. King Kong. Let's just say the Supra was King Kong. <laughs> in my eyes. So I ended up selling it, bought a 1993 Alpine Silver Toyota Supra twin turbo RZ model. And I did basic performance upgrades into cooler, cap back exhaust. I had the twin turbos running in sequential. So they both kicked on at the exact same time. Boost controller, we upped the boost and it made something like 380 wheel horsepower, a little over 400 horse brake horsepower. And that was enough for me to really experience the car for the first time. Experience the noise, the drivability, how it maneuvered, you know, how the rear end kicks out, everything. Unfortunately, uh, I ended up selling the car to fund another hobby of mine, which at the time was fitness. I wanted to turn that hobby of mine into a viable e-commerce platform. And so that's what we did. We ended up selling the Alpine Silver Toyota Supra and ended up funding the business that you guys know today, Do You Even? We've been running that business for like eight years now. So I kind of feel like the Supra has been a part of that journey or at least catalyzed that journey for me because I needed the funds. I needed to free up some cash flow and to sacrifice one love for another love is like, is there a movie reference that we can put in there where you kill one love for another love? That's basically what I did. I sacrificed a hobby of mine for another hobby of mine, which had no guarantee. I took the plunge, I took a risk, and I have since been working incredibly hard at it, but I knew in the back of my mind that I would always own one of these cars again. That's why we're here today. I have a genuine deep jewel green series two Toyota Supra waiting in there for us to film. And I ended up buying that car in late 2016. Aaron Claver from Import Monster imported it. As soon as I saw it, I had to have it. I later found out from the Supra registry and all the forums online, as well as the Facebook groups that there are only 14 of these in the world. 14 series two deep jewel green Toyota Supras. And we have one of them. And the reason behind the fact that there were so few numbers is because Toyota ended up discontinuing that color for series two models. So only a handful of owners were lucky enough to own one and we now have it. So let's go check it out. Jay, my man. Guys, this is Jay from GeForce Race Solutions. 
So I was just telling everyone that this is my Deep Jewel Green um, Series 2 Toyota Supra. It started life as a non-turbo automatic and I remember as soon as I got it, the transmission had to be ripped out, the engine had to be ripped out and I needed to find someone who could adequately build this car and not just adequately, they needed to be fastidious and obsessed. And that's what Jake is. <laughs> <laughs> They're generally obsessed with super and like when we started going through the parts catalog, you know, it's not a Toyota Supra unless, oh, delivery. Don't worry, we get these all the time in Australia Post at, back at our warehouse. <laughs> delivery guys, what the hell? You guys know, like when we're filming, you have to hit the vlog, it's far out. It's like they got this sixth sense. They're like, Eddie's filming a vlog, quick, delivery, delivery, delivery. <laughs> the reverse signal in the uh... car. But as you can see, take a look at this beast. If you guys are following for the business tips, do you even, and all things editors, and you're not really into cars, this is a Toyota Supra, and you don't own a Toyota Supra unless it's 1,000 horsepower, right? So that was the first goal, 1,000 <laughs> horsepower. Look, there's even a dyno reading right here, 1,116 horsepower. Was that the Circuit Supra? No, that was actually another Supra. Oh, see, look. Just a little bit under that. Just a little bit under. They're all a thousand horsepower. So if you own a Toyota Supra and you're, you're out there on the streets with your measly 400 horse from a twin turbo setup, you know where to go. <laughs> but anyway, let's get on to the parts. I came to Jay. Intention was a thousand horsepower. I remember seeing things build. What was his name? Uh, uh, George. Yeah, his George is, Sutton's build. Red um, standard bottom end. Uh, GDX 45 car yeah, yeah. The workshop at the time. Um, I remember coming in, I'm like, oh yeah, I want this baby type turbo, like a GTX 42. I think I was, that's where we were heading. And then I saw that on the hoist and I'm like, we need to go bigger. So at the time, this was like, I guess the biggest would go without jumping to a T6 and then being ridiculous and trying to keep, I guess, make a street car. We sort of went with the, the biggest T4 we could get from Garrett. But yeah, I guess, um, and it is kind of like, I guess the smallest turbo you can get to fill that gap. So this is the biggest turbo that you can fit in there at the moment without positioning everything. Well, the, the biggest the biggest Garrett, um, we wanted to stick with a tried and tested brand, I suppose, with Garrett. So that's why we chose that one. There's all different ones that have sort of evolved since that time. You were telling me about this, one recently. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's the G42 range that's out that has similar flow characteristics and smaller size, so better response than that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this, especially because we're putting it behind or putting an auto behind it, so we can still get it up on the converter, not an issue. So, in terms of this build, we've got an RS 1600 package from Real Street. Those guys are tried and tested as well. So, we went to Real Street, basically took out their entire catalog as well as PHR. Yeah, so we went with a um, 3.4 litre. Uh, RS 1600, which has the 10, 10 to 1 compression pistons. So we want it to be lively, so we went for the slightly higher uh, compression option. And it's mated to a automatic TH400? Yeah, built. A fully manualized Turbo 400. Yeah, well I guess will, will allow us to still make this a pretty lively car on the street. And go fast. And go fast. In a straight line. I mean, <laughs> I guess primarily, I guess we're more interested in, in, in being able to be street driven and being a, a nice car overall. So like we've kept the luxuries of air conditioning. True street car. Yeah, that's all we are. <laughs> so, I mean, everyone's going out there for records and, and all this, you know, all these other stuff. That's great. Um, but it's not really like, it's, I guess it's, it's- It's not our goal. It's not our goal. It's not really yeah. what we're about. Uh, yeah. I guess it's as far as like with this project, we wanted to make use of it, get it out there. Sort of kind of what, what we did a bit with the other Supra that everyone confused. Oh my with, God. With this so, one. so there was cool. another, there was another car that we ended up buying, another Toyota Supra. It was resprayed in Deep Jewel Green and it was an aerotop. So I told Jay at the time, I'm like, I want something to drive on the street while we build up this monstrosity, while we accumulate the parts for this car. I'm like, I just want something in the interim. And we flew to Sydney, got the car, drove it back and all it needed <laughs> was a fuel upgrade and tune, and then what happened? How it made close to so it ended, ended up being um, 900 wheel horsepower. Yeah, they're about. <laughs> Sort of got a bit carried away with that. They got really carried um, away. I, yeah, look, I, I built the car to the shit house. Everyone got confused with the two builds. Rightfully so, the cars were both the same color. I ended up selling that car. 
Uh, it's now in Sydney, owned by a boot. <laughs> Abdullah, and I think he's resprayed the car Baltic Blue, but anyway, doesn't matter about that car. We're all about this one. This was the initial build. This was the car that sparked everything back for me. Had to have it. Jay, do you want to take us through, like, what do we need to do next? What do we need to, like, realistically, how long until we hear those bells and whistles, the turbo well, whistles and yeah, noise? So, and... so now we've sort of cleared up a bit of, um, I guess, space in the shop. We're right back onto it. So at this stage, we're gonna finish off the fabrication. So we've still got the dump pipe, front pipe to do in titanium, sort out the hot side cooler piping. And then I suppose at, while we're doing that as well, we'll finish off all the wiring in the engine bay. We'll get everything, so everything's gonna be This is gonna up. be tucked away under the fenders as well? Yeah, everything's out of sight <laughs> as far as that. Um, what are, we're running a 2500 Elite. So we're running a uh, Haltec Elite 2500 with a race expansion module. Yep. We're also using the Haltec MNW CDI ignition. Basically the computer that speaks to everything on the car yeah. at the so highest level. We've got the full Haltec catalog uh, yep. on board with this car. When people to... throw catalogs at us, we're just like, everything. We'll take the lot. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we, 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 we'll go in there anyway. So like, I mean, that, that was our, our brand of choice. We want to make use of it. Again, street car, uh, traction control, yeah, you track, want all... torque control, yep. your torque management as far as we've got you know drive shaft speed sensor, every wheel speed sensor in yep. use. Yep. Um, we've also got things like wastegate position sensor, wastegate pressure, boost Everything. pressure. We've got every every sensor that's available for it. We're running on this. You know, we'll run EGT setup as well. So we're sort of at the moment really tight on space on what we're going to do in the yeah. passenger footwell yeah, yeah. to try oh to keep God. it out of the way. <laughs> um, and also we've got I guess more wiring to run through there, but we'll, we'll tuck that up out of the way. It won't be sorry. Time. The passenger can sit in like a, just a bunch of wires. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, look, the, the aim is to, to make a nice, tidy street car, keep yeah. the interior original as original as possible we don't <coughs> want to be we we're just stuff like we we're that. just discussing roll cages as well roll cage options of, yeah, obviously like we, we, we want to be safe yeah with with safety in mind as much as like you know street cars don't have roll cages or that's you know part of the dribble, the, persona. the, the dribble yeah. that goes on on the street and stuff you well, want we can't, we can't have this you want to be safe yeah we can't have this, this much power not to say that we're going to be uh we're definitely not interested in hooning as well yeah so we want to make use of this car on the track and to do that we need to have the cage that's um certified to run at those speeds that's happening so so we'll finish up all the plumbing, we'll do all the wiring, then we'll rip everything out again. And then we're gonna have the bay painted and then everything goes back in. And then at that stage, we're ready to, I suppose, turn key. Yeah, and um, then just test, yeah, test. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanna get some track time. Like, I don't wanna die the first time I drive this car. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It'll be fun. It's very easy to carry it away. Um, but I think, you know, we, we wanna be prepared as possible, have all the electronics to help us to put the power down and make use of it. And then once we've got that sorted, it's not gonna be a matter of like, we're gonna go out first time and run a killer time. Yeah. We'll work on it and you know slowly creep up on it, I suppose. But at the same time, we're not gonna be pushing the absolute limits because no. we've gone this far and we wanna, I guess, enjoy it at the same time. Also. Yeah, you wanna get some longevity out of the build. Yeah. Well, we'll see how we go. First, I wanna get it up and running, but then we can look at new routes of going faster, better, quicker, stronger, whatever it may be. Obviously, technology is always changing. So with that comes, you know, more efficient turbo systems, better builds. Obviously, at the time, this is with every checklist ticked on um, Real Street and PHR, Garrett, Haltech. Like, it has all the finest parts. And this is the first time seeing, you know, the, well, not the first time seeing the engine in the car, but the most complete. And I'm. <laughs> yeah, this, I'm I, think, I think you'd seen it where it was, um, we had the mock engine, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. in the other yeah. car. We, we had done some um, some, already, some mock fitting and stuff yeah. to try to get the transmission mounts do you want to take, sorted. Do you want to take everyone through a couple of the parts here, Jay? Yeah, I suppose on the, on the exterior we've got a uh, Hypertune uh, twin rail uh, right there. manifold. The beautiful PHR billet covers, uh, gears, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and pulley, pulley kit on the front. Yeah, the sexy six boost manifold that I think was Oh the yeah, first. look at this stainless steel. Yeah, so it was um, the first stainless steel to Jay. I think he'd have done some Nissan ones, but this, was, this was the first 2J manifold that he had oh, made. That, that, that took a while to get, but we're more than happy with the result there. It's, it's, it's quite uh, beautiful. It's got a billet uh, collector. And then that's going to go into a titanium dump? Yeah, so we've got, uh, going to run a full titanium exhaust, including titanium uh, screamer. So yeah, so I guess we want that, we want that, <laughs> that unique sound. <laughs> And also, I guess, the, the look that goes with Do you want to it. give an impression of the sound, Jay? Uh, no, I won't do my car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. 
<laughs> Jay um, does a better impression than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah depending on my mood. Uh, you'll definitely have a loud scream. Yep. I guess the, the Aerotop we just had, it just had a HKS titanium rim muffler, yep. and that had an, an interesting note. Yep. This thing's going to rev a lot higher than that. Yep. Um, so it's it's going to be full. And it's turbo back. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. So you, we'll be able to hear the, every single whistle and noise and, and, and spool up and all that. So there's plenty really of noise going on. Get with to hear thing. that beautiful 2J. Have oh, you had any, have you had anyone else come in here and have like the full titanium? No, no, usually, um, <laughs> I suppose when we start talking about the cost of material and yeah, the time involved. So much. Uh, not so much. We, we've had, a, you know, we, I've done a couple of titanium uh, muffler. Yeah. Um, so I guess axle back setups. Yep. Um, but yeah, as far as doing the rest of it, no one's ventured that far. Yeah, cool. I guess with the engine, Brian Crower built crank or forged crank. We've got, I think it was Manly tri beam rods. Mm -hmm. And we've got CP special, I guess, real street spec. Pistons. Yeah, we've got there. GSC cams as well. Yep, GSC S2s, which is our go-to cam. Which yep. they, they, I mean, not only do they perform and have a wide, a broad power. They have uh, that lumpy. Band, but they've got that lumpy idle. Um, That's what so, we want. You know, we so want lump. They, so they, yeah, so they're plenty of lump. Like it's not shy in that respect, especially with the, I guess with the exhaust, it's going to sound unique. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then with the head, we've got a fully ported head, oversized valves, Ferrier uh, double row valve springs. And I guess, I guess we've, we've, we've pretty much be equivalent to like a stage three yeah it's not, it's not yeah. crazy amount yeah. of massive porting but yeah. one of our tried and tested setups i suppose in that regard and then obviously all the wiring is going to get sorted and tucked underneath so the engine bay is going to look extremely clean like right now you know like this is like the car's an original deep jewel green super so i'm assuming like this is it's the original paint unless someone from japan uh, it's, sprayed it's, it's, it's it it's had a, a few touch-ups <laughs> touch <-up. laughs> like, looks like car park <laughs> But uh, incidents, but I guess this is the original base coat. Yeah. That then the turtle leaves in the engine bays. It looks yeah. a bit dull. So it does look dull. You know, we need the, the, the bay to the paint to go along with the with the rest. The of shiny the engine. engine bay. Yeah. So we'll give that a, a gloss finish. Yep. Uh, won't go too crazy. Like we won't do. We won't shave the bay or anything like that as such. But we'll just tidy it up, and make it go with the rest of the car. Yeah. Cool. Just to set it off, I suppose. Interior. There's not really much to see at the moment, but we're gonna get all the wiring sorted. So the passenger footwell stuff that Jay was just talking about. Everything will be hopefully tidy. Yeah, everything will definitely be out of the way under the carpet. Uh, and we've got because they're running the Haltech, the, the full loom for both the ECU and the, and the race expansion module. There's there's quite a few extra wires above and beyond what you'd have in your normal setup. So we've got you know wheel speed sensor, uh, drive shaft speed sensor, diff temp, transmission temperature, transmission pressure, yeah. trans brake control, and all that stuff already pre-terminated on this end of it. So we've got to run that through the car. We've still got to um, mount a switch panel to have. Uh, multiple settings for traction control, top control, boost control, ignition curve and all the rest. So we're going along and doing all that. We'll have to hide that most likely inside the console there, the center console, so it's out of the way. But yeah, there's, there's, I think there's just as much wiring and, and stuff to do on this side as there is to do on the, on the other side. side so. Yeah. And then this is going to get shaved down as well. So we'll slightly. have it tucked under so we can have it under a regular manual surround. And then this will be our manual surround so it'll sort of look like... Yeah, we'll change that. We're going to pretend. Uh, We'll pretend that, that it's still more. a manual car. But, uh, <laughs> we'll it's just retrofitted. And then we've got these beautiful Recaros. These aren't going to get changed, are they? Because I mean, it's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> you want to run with those? <laughs> I, had, I had another guy message me. I think it was Daniel. And he was like, hey, man, are you selling the seats? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, um, like, I'm like, no, but it was worth the try. We can uh, probably have to run a Kirky seat on the driver's side. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But we'll, we'll try to keep that these Recaros in so we can switch uh, between, I guess, street and track duties. Yeah. Um, yeah. They should fit within the intrusion bars, the side intrusion bars. Again, we'll, we'll keep as much as we can. We'll be as, and as at least invasive as we can yeah. with the interior, considering it's, it's probably one of the best uh, conditions other than that little bit of dash lift. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. which is normal. Yeah, which is, is just normal for Supras um, this age. We'll, we'll fix that up when we we'll pull the dash out. But yeah, we'll try to keep everything as stock as possible. So when you reckon we're going to be doing this? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> I actually just spoke to the panel shop, so it's yep. off to the panel shop for the engine bay on the 15th of July. Yep. We'll get it back at the end of the following week. Yep. And then I think we'll have a hard and fast yeah, sweet. approach to the... Um, well, we just wanted to give everyone like a quick update on like where the car was at. People haven't even seen this car before yeah, in right. video. Okay. So like this is your first impression. And there's obviously a lot more content to come from the car. 
you know, we're going to do the engine bay, we're going to get everything wired up properly, we're going to get the car running, tuned, and then we're going to iron out the bugs. And we're going to hope to bring you guys through that entire journey, you know, through the races, through the tuning nights, through potentially even like the painting process, whatever it may be. This is an extremely rare example of what Toyota created. We want to give this build as much justice as possible. That's what we're aiming for. Everything that we want to do is like non-intrusive, keep it street friendly, but also give it all the bells and whistles for the power it needs. <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> that covers it. Yeah, I guess just, just to capture the true street car, I want to be able to fully use it in all conditions and stay true to, you know, to a street Supra. Mind you, like the CCW Classics as well, the wheels on the car, perfect. Yeah, I keep buying them off. And <laughs> I think I made a couple of offers. <laughs> it's just a little bit too wide on the front, but the, the rear definitely do it for me. I'm going to get out of your hair so you guys can uh, obviously get back to work. You guys are always under the pump. So I've got to thank Jay for his time, letting us record here, get some content. We're going to head back to the office. I tell you I run this, I'm done with excuses. Give me four minutes trying to get what I've been giving out. Do it for the tickets, I don't listen to the critics. I'm going to push him to the limit.